Summer isn't far away, which means a lot of us are going to be heading back here. But if you're licking New South Wales, something else is getting back in the water. This is a shark net. They're anywhere between 124 to 186 metres long, 6 metres deep, and are anchored to the sea floor. They're floating around at 55 beaches in Queensland all year round, while in New South Wales they're installed at 51 beaches from September 1st to April 1st every year. In New South Wales, the shark nets aim to protect the public from three species. White sharks, bull sharks and tiger sharks. According to the New South Wales government, these three species are most frequently involved in serious shark bites in New South Wales, so they've become the focus of their Shark Smart monitoring program. Shark nets aren't common. In fact, only New South Wales, Queensland and some beaches in South Africa use them. And Queensland is the only place to keep them up all year round. Since their addition to New South Wales waters in 1937, there's only been one shark-related death at a netted beach. However, recent studies suggest there's a whole range of reasons that shark-related deaths aren't super common, including a big increase in surf life-saving patrols and improved medical responses to shark bites. Since their introduction, there have been 24 shark attacks at netted beaches in New South Wales. And some scientists say this shows that they don't really work. So these nets in New South Wales, for example, are 150 metres long or so. Sharks can swim over, under, around them. And what we've also found is about 40% of sharks can actually be caught on the beach side of a net. Imagine a fly screen door, except all you had on that fly screen door was a thin strip of mesh no wider than your finger. And you're hoping to keep the flies out. Obviously, it's not going to work. Dr Leo Guida is a shark scientist and conservationist at the Australian Marine Conservation Society. He says the nets are doing more harm than good. They literally are our curtains of death. They catch a whole swathe of animals. You're talking rays, turtles, dolphins, and of, of course other shark species too. In the last 10 years alone, 3,866 animals have been caught in the nets. Of that, 3,295 were non-target species. That's more than 85%. More than 2,000 of those animals were killed, including threatened and protected species like green turtles, seals, bottlenose dolphins and humpback whales. In the last shark net season, two grey nurse sharks and a great hammerhead shark were both killed. Both of these species are critically endangered. Private contractors do go out and check all of the nets every few days. And if any non-target animals are caught in the nets, they do their best to untangle them and release them back into the ocean. But at the end of the day, you know, they're not sitting on the net every second of the day either. And it doesn't take long for an animal to, particularly for an air breathing animal, like, like a turtle or a seal, to, to die. What do we want? Shark nets out! Over the past decade, there have been calls to take the nets out of the water for good. In 2021, all eight local councils that had shark nets told the New South Wales government they were against them. While surveys of the general public show that about 60 to 70% of people want them out of the water. And once the public saw the carnage those nets reaped, they said, no, no, we don't want nets here anymore. We, we prefer other methods to protect people. Despite all of this, the New South Wales government made the decision earlier this month that the nets would be going up for the 86th year in a row. Many experts say the government is hesitant to take the nets down if someone was attacked by a shark at a previously netted beach. I think it's a good ambition to remove shark nets in Sydney, but we've got a ways to go when it comes to that shark detection technology, and I don't think the work will be done in enough time for summer. But, yeah, beyond that... Maddie level, Riley is a marine biologist at Flinders University who is doing her PhD on shark deterrent technology. There are so many measures out there, but there's no silver bullet. You really need to think about the specific area uh, where you're implementing that mitigation measure and, and apply the mitigation measure for that area. And it's likely that a combination of different mitigation measures will provide the best protection. 
Over the last couple of years, the New South Wales government has put more than $85 million worth of funding toward different shark detection technology, including drones, extra surf lifesavers, smart drum lines, which are baited hooks that alert authorities when something bites it, and shark listening stations, which alerts the public when a target shark that has been tagged with a GPS tracker swims within 500 metres of a station. Maddie says in the last five years, a lot more science has gone into shark deterrence. We're finding that electric deterrents are some of the most effective out there. We've seen a real boom in the number of shark bite mitigation measures that are available, which is great, but also in, in the number of these measures that are actually scientifically tested. Scientists like Leo and Maddie say that shark nets are outdated and putting more money toward different technologies would not only protect marine life, but keep people a lot safer in the long run. The more that we understand about sharks and their behaviour and their movements and what they're doing and why they're doing it and what they're eating, and the list goes on, the more that we understand about sharks, the better we are able to protect shark populations but also keep humans safer in the ocean because we know more about the species and what they're doing.